I'm just gonna do a really quick energy check-in because it's been a few days and I have a lot of stuff to follow up with from the video that I posted, I don't know, probably four days ago now. Um, getting some time near water again. I know that the audio quality is horrible, but I couldn't help myself. I really wanted to be next to the water to do this reading. So um, I'm here with my sidekick and somebody is chopping down trees across the way. So forgive the audio ahead of time, but we're just gonna get into a really quick update. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, this is gonna be 10 minutes long max. So again, excuse the audio. I literally could have picked a different spot along the waterfront, but I like this dock, so. Oh gosh, I mean, it's a sign. I really shouldn't be doing this right now or right here but let's get into it. What I'm feeling intuitively within the collective is that there's just a lot of activity in the dream space um, and a lot of bodily purging. So this could come in all different kinds of forms. The, the, the fatigue and the extreme exhaustion that I mentioned the other day, but also indigestion, headaches, um, sleeplessness. Um, be really compassionate with your own experiences right now around all of that and just try to absolutely um, continue the, f the flow of um, like any, like like hydration, right? Just a lot of water, deep breathing, bringing things into the body and releasing what your body is trying to release you of. Um, because when you're ascending in frequency, you're releasing density. I'm like changing your physicality in some ways. And I uh, recommend taking activated charcoal capsules because they bind to the toxins in the digestive tract and help you excrete like things that your body is holding on to. Um, activated charcoal tablets. So I just wanted to say that, but let's see. I'm going to shuffle these up and then I'm going to take one, two, three from the top and top and bottom of the deck. And it's going to be a little bit of a check in around. Um, well, you know what? One, two, three. Okay, position one is going to be current energy and then it's going to be energy to embrace and then it's going to be energy to release. Okay, current energy actually just flopped off the top. What is it? It's the seven of wands. So kind of pushing through, and this is energy to embrace the hermit. And this is energy to release death. Top and bottom of the deck for clarifiers. Actually top is gonna to be incoming energy. Bottom is gonna be what we don't see. Incoming six of cups. What we don't see is the five of swords. Clarify the five of swords for me around what we don't see, the four of swords. All right, so I'm gonna start by talking about that. So the Five of Swords, the Four of Swords, and hidden energy position, there's something around our mental activity that we're having a hard time bypassing because we can't see past the fact that we're still trying to use logic to solve a puzzle that doesn't need solving. There's a little bit of acceptance that has to come from within right now that is going to be, um, back to the sailing analogy, very apropos as I'm at the lake, um, there are literally no boats out though because it's rainy and misty and dead and there's no wind. The universe, as I said before, is trying to take us, um, last reading, I'm sorry, two readings ago, full moon reading, a pivot from all the swords, all the anxiety, all the grief, all of these things that haven't worked out um, into wands and the formulation of like new ideas and actually just a new expression, swords to wands, but then the next level is like major arcana and harmonizing and bringing the emotions in and pentacles as well to have a grounded a groundedness you have to take it down to the earth and so the swords and the wands are not as grounded and so <clears throat> basically what i'm seeing here is that with this being current energy we're, we're still trying to kind of battle things away that we can't sort through with the mind four of swords so energy to <clears throat> embrace being the hermit I'm not necessarily seeing this as um, solitude by yourself, although it could be. I'm more so seeing it as this um, acceptance of the fact that everything that unfolds within your mind, whether it be thoughts that you initiate and like create, or if it's the subconscious flow of thoughts that occur within your mind when you're reacting and responding to things around you, there needs to come an acceptance that th that's only you. All of that is you, the hermit, right? There's this solitary being that is operating the dashboard. The switchboard is controlled by you and you alone. And so there's this 
intimacy, the energy to embrace is that there's an intimacy around the facets of our own mind, subconscious and conscious, and like full psyche to be embraced, to be able to understand why we keep keeping ourselves stuck because that is a subconscious. We are breaking free from certain subconscious patterns because as you continue to move through some of the energies right now, as I've said before, it's never really done, right? You move through and more, more comes up to be released and it can be incredibly, um, I, uh, you know, just perhaps discouraging or confusing basically. So that's what I'm getting off of the hermit in terms of energy to embrace. And then for energy to release, we have death. Give me a clarifier. I'm going to cut the deck here. It's, it's the six of pentacles. So now we have two sixes because the incoming energy is the six of cups. But in the release position, death with six of pentacles, this is about charity and givingness and extension of the self in a real practical material way. But death is about closeouts and kind of recycling the things that remain in your physical reality through a new chapter. So it's not like you discard when, when you move through energetic cycles and have new cycles and closeouts and rebirths physical world around you pentacles it may not look any different but all changes that are radically rooting into space and time that you start to see physical evidence of over the course of months and years always have to do with the internal first and the shifts and so with energy to release I feel like we have to take it back to that internal place we might be too outward facing right now around the closeouts so that's a little vague hopefully that resonates for somebody in the way that it needs to right now incoming energy we have the six of cups and i love that because it's about the emotional connection and as i said before we're having this transition and we might have a little opposition to it but it's because we haven't had that i think full acceptance around like i don't have to be my you know i don't have to be an enemy i don't have to be arguing with myself I don't have to be, I can be a friend to myself. That's what's taking place in the hermit energy. And again, I don't, it could be for you a solitude um, where you are away from others, but I'm not, I'm not really getting that. I actually think that we're going to be kind of mingling, interacting with people right now. There's a lot of lake flies and I do not like them. Um, it's more so the practice of being around people, but noticing that there is still just one, you know, <laughs> There's the ability to see everything that happens in your mind when you're alone, when you're with people, as something that you are responsible for. And I talked about that the other day as far as through kind of quantum entanglement and the power of, this is what I've talked about before, as in like in the future, it's gonna be harder to lie to people because people are gonna be intensifying in their telepathic abilities and there's gonna be no, like if, if I meet someone and, and immediately possess a strong judgment against them, they will be able to sense that and that will, you know, highlight why I'm, and then I'll reflect on, on me, right? There's gonna be less things, things that take a long time to iron out relationally these days will be no longer concealed. And it's kind of like, it encourages us to clean up our perceptions of ourselves and therefore others so that we can relate in an authentic way, um, see ourselves for every, every point along our existence that we get triggered and let that become this thing that pulls us back inward in order to basically evolve and ascend as I've talked about with like it, simulation theory you could see it as levels of a video game where it's like you you just kind of get clearance into new experiences where again back to like the physical body too like clearing density out to hold more space and like higher vibrational frequencies and like after you you know you kind of stabilize through it then there's going to be new like emotional components and, and thresholds that you start to feel and integrate as a result of not shutting down and circulating back into the same stuff, like the karmic cycle. So the plateau, the level, if you don't want to deal with certain things, you will recirculate. Therefore, the energy, the manifestations around you as you move through your life will continue to be, uh, there, there will be a common thread through those things that has to do with the level that you're on in terms of what you're willing or unwilling to release. So I'm gonna get a clarifier for Six of Cups as the energy that's coming toward us, because what I was gonna say is that we are looking towards this new kind of grounded emotional major arcana right the emperor the empress and strength um has to do with like true connection that's based off of um two people adults no matter how old right if their inner children feel safe together that's a very good sign 
That's a very good sign. And what does that even mean? Well, it's just basically like how I've talked about in the past. You need to be able to advocate for your inner child. And a lot of adults have unhealed inner children that they don't advocate for. And so they shut parts of themselves down because they learned how to do that when they were really young. And so there's this separation between their like needs and, and the, like understandings of themselves and then how they exercise their um, like chakra system really, but their, their expression of themselves in the world is compromised and a lot of these things kind of, with the twisties again, build over time. The ways in which we compromise ourselves because we haven't learned to acknowledge, I guess like the ego, right? You could think of the ego and the, the, the um, like as in devil energy, like the intrusive thoughts or like the negative stuff. It, there's, there's this, there's this, it always tries to rope you back in because the ego is who we, it is not who you are, it's who you think you are. So when that starts to get disassembled, it's very uncomfortable. Oi, oi, come on back. Sorry, I just had to wrangle my animal. 11, 11 on the clock when I look up. So let's get a clarifier for the six of cups as incoming energy. Yeah, it's the emperor. So that's cool. I kind of want to see for some reason what's underneath it. The ace of wands. So that's beautiful because again, I feel like it's a simplification around the fact that like a person in this position, a person in power, a person in healed, either masculine or feminine energy. I'm just seeing this as mirror, right? The yin to the yang. Um, I'm sorry, the yang to the yin really, but oh i just saw this big ass sturgeon jump oh my gosh there have been times when i like you know maybe was tubing or something in this lake or sailboating and then i um may have fallen off the tube or something and so waiting for the boat to come around like way far out in this lake and just i don't like the jaws imagery of having the little like legs at the surface and like not knowing what's underneath oh i hate that and i was like that and my cousin was like i don't know maybe 20 feet away from me and we were swimming and, and she was like, oh my God, something just touched my foot. And then right behind her, I see the biggest, that's actually not that big as far as fish go, but for something that's gonna swim past you and brush you, I mean, it was probably bigger than that. Sturgeons get really big. It like it did this massive like flip out of the water right behind her and I was like, <gasps> we have to find the boat immediately. This lake has carried a lot of memories for me. There's a story that I could share from the same cousin we were sailing and a thunderstorm came on <clears throat> and it's a boat that needs like two people to sail it basically we were 14 years old um so this is 15 years ago <laughs> we were sailing out on this lake and when the wind gets real shifty something can take place i was talking about switching tacks it's called an accidental jibe where you don't want the boom to come across but the wind shifts and the sail picks the wind and it comes across with an incredible amount of force so that happened to us because the wind was real shifty with the storm coming in and the boom smacked me on the side of the head knocked me unconscious and hit me out of the boat and like i think i was wearing a life jacket which is pretty cool because honestly sometimes we don't because we grew up sailing and I think we were doing a lesson. We used to take lessons here together. And anyway, I was entirely delirious. I like woke up talking about hot dogs and my flip flops and I was like floating in the water, kind of confused. I don't really remember any of that. And I don't really remember getting back to the boat. Um, she was a champion and I'm like, that was such a weird, scary thing that happened to us. <laughs> like got, she, she managed to get me back in, you know, to the boat, close to the boat. Um, so <clears throat> I'm not sure why I'm sharing that. And I wish that the camera caught the sturgeon. Maybe while I'm doing this reading, another one will flip and you'll be able to see it in the background because you get to see the lake. But anyway, anyway, the clarification for the emperor along with the six of cups and what was underneath it was the ace of wands. <sighs> the emperor or the empress energy, it's not about being all knowing. It's about knowing one's place in the world as we take up space in our 3D physical reality. Something that's very perplexing on my journey that I've come to accept is like, there is a deep, infinite, accurate knowing within me that can go to many places, but that's kind of the quantum of my, that's the ability of my soul and my spirit. And there is an amnesia that happens with the human experience through the different incarnations for a reason, because you, you unlearn and you relearn, you unlearn the things that have been instilled within you and you relearn the things that cut like, you know, come up within you as like your truth. Um, 
I've, I've managed miraculously somehow to maintain a lot of my inner truth, like keep it intact from, from childhood, you know, until, until now. Um, I've been very protective of that, but it's hard to do in this world. And so that's why it's kind of created problems for me over, over time, I think. Um, I, I won't really go into this today, but soon I think I will talk about it because I went through some chapters of my life. Like the first medication I was ever put on, I think I was 14 years old, um, was Prozac. And I didn't, I wasn't somebody who needed Prozac. And so it started to create other problems for me. And then, and then that was subsequently medicated. And there was a point in time when I was on like five or six medications all at once. And not, none of them, I kind of want to walk people through that because I will put a meme on the screen right here. I, it's from Barbie when it's like one of the opening scenes when she's dancing and she goes, does anybody think about dying? And does anybody else think about dying? Does anybody ever think about death? Except somebody swapped out the text. To, I mean, you'll see, it's basically like, does anybody ever think about how the DSM, like the psychiatric definitions that have evolved in the United States have defined what is acceptable behavior or not. And that's really problematic. And in different kind of, you know, countries, third world countries, tribes, people who are more connected with nature still, they have far less instances of like mental health and um, ailment and disease. And um, it's not about diagnosing somebody. It's like, are you unwell? Go to the shaman, <laughs> get some medicinal herbs, you know? And then they're well again. And we have created so many ways for people to be unwell that you're going to fit one of those descriptions. We're so overstimulated. Like, how can you not be unwell in this in this world? It's really hard right now. And a lot of people cope with it by dissociating and shutting down a little bit. And there's memes about that too. Um, like, it's kind of funny how I'm just watching America crumble and sitting back being like, yeah, that'll happen to an empire. <laughs> That's how it goes in history, like completely removed from the fact that we are kind of, um, it's very interesting to think about being bound into this experience, right? Like some people think about other people who are seemingly strangers to them and they're like, well, I don't give a fuck about them. I don't know them. And it's like, hey, hey, no, hey, you, hey, buddy, sit tight, come here, come here. It's like... Why, do, why, why I, I'm, as I continue to grow and evolve, I lose the ability to understand how anybody can be locked into separateness. I mean, I, I understand it, of course, and I have compassion for it, but it's kind of mind boggling because it's like, we're, I mean, we're all kind of in the same thing. We're all bound to this planet. <laughs> we're all kind of bound to things that are outside of us in the power structures in the world. You know what I mean? Like we're kind of just along for the ride in terms of whatever they start to release and talk about uh, oh gosh, I have so, so much stuff to say, but I don't want to get too carried away. It's already at 18 minutes. So, oh, hey, here's the world. I do think that a lot of things are going to be opening up for us. What's interesting, there's a dichotomy in the energy here. Hey, no, stay here. Stay here. We're almost done. There's a dichotomy in the energy around the fall. Okay, so we have the diminishing of the light as we move closer to the winter solstice. And I think that it's cool because people think about getting cozier and like going inside and like coming back to the self and like the little, I don't know what it, you know, uh, traditions around holiday times. And it's more of like a time to try to be with people that you love. And there's kind of like a coming into the darkness or the self, but there is this huge expansion taking place in the energy that is like counterintuitive to that, where we're going to be able to really move forward with a lot of like September's a little more of this like okay take a deep breath and start to ground into what has shifted for you in the last three months and then <clears throat> kind of prepare to do another little uh you know what's interesting is that I'm seeing I'm seeing the summer as being a sine wave that has a certain I'm seeing October November and December as like do 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 really quick sine wave so it, it's the frequency is um there's going to be some intensity that is far beyond our conscious mind's ability to process it so i have a feeling that a lot of the expansion that's really quite beautiful really quite illuminating it'll it'll you know our world will open up basically throughout these months but we won't necessarily be like tracking it mentally we'll be feeling it we'll be experiencing it i think our internal worlds will be shifting kind of as we 
acclimate to whatever changes kind of take shape in our lives. But I do want to go back to what I was saying because I never finished this thought. So we've got the Emperor, we've got the Six of Cups, and we've got the Ace of Wands. And what I wanted to say is that somebody in kind of a healed energy, it's not about being all-knowing. It's not about being all-knowing. And then I got off on a tangent talking about like, I can, I, I kind of wake up every day and I don't know what I'm doing. You know, and then whenever I need to, I can sit down into this anchored self and I can pull through wisdom. It's from my higher self, it's from my guides. And it's not like I always have that though, is what I'm trying to say. You don't, you know that when you need something, it'll be there. Um, and so it's coming back to this simplicity, this, this fresh start, this ace of wands, this new, and the wands, right? They have to do with idea and creativity and passion. Um, A spark of inspiration and it's it's sort of um, okay there's also something coming through for me around how um, a lot of people just forget how to have fun I guess right he totally he's totally stern right but this is the clarifier for this so it's about knowing that to be like, it's, you know, you could die at any second. You can't take life too seriously. And if you do, um, I mean, no, I'm not going to go in that direction. But, but all I'm saying is that this kind of revitalization that's coming through the energy has to do with our ability to surrender the mental battles and stop being so damn self-critical, really. Understand that you can be both unknowing and open and curious, but still be mature and evolved. It actually, it actually is a sign of intelligence to be like, you know, questioning and, um, and open. People who don't think they need help or need to seek out answers, they tend to stunt their own growth because we will never have all the answers. That's why there's billions of people on the earth. Everybody has a unique lens and vantage point from the beyond into the human experience. The soul creates eyes from the energetic level into the 3D. Everything that I see passes through me, translates into my mind, and then starts to kind of knit together, right? The, the space that I take up energetically in the quantum fabric of interconnectedness, everybody does that. So some people kind of sit in that complacently and they don't necessarily, I think, I'm just saying, if you stop kind of questioning the nature of your world and, and how things are happening, and I mean minutia, micro, macro, in any way, um, this has to do with the ego as well, right? And from the full moon reading that I did, like seven days ago now, or eight days ago, Emperor, Empress, Strength. Strength card depicts Empress taming the lion who represents the ego of all beings, but really the, the emperor's ego. So it's about being um, like humble and surrendering, which, which you can feel. That would be a sensation that you feel when you are able to stop being self-critical and kind of release whatever it is that is. <clears throat> Whew. Closing out, right, in an honest way and being able to see and sense into the truth of the transits that you're going through. I do think that there's like some really deep intensity right now and it has to do with what I said a few days ago around like as you get expanded you kind of have to root in deeper as well which has to do with being able to access the depths which has to do with facing what lies in your depths and then either kind of closing out closing out the assumptions that that lie there you know making peace with certain things or um hey the lovers in the sun card I was just shuffling and these two flipped over. So it, it really is a true resolution within the anima, the animus, the feminine and masculine polarities within our own selves. Just this acknowledgement of like, I mean, holy cow, there's a lot of reasons to be upset and dismayed and feeling unsafe or insecure. Like there's so many reasons to not be happy, but at the same time, life is incredibly unpredictable and you can create experiences for yourself through your attitude um the the dog sees a bunny rabbit
all a person can ever do is try to show up to where they're at. And I mean, like, I don't know, we, we all live such different, interesting lives. Like that guy wearing that shirt with that chainsaw cutting down that tree, totally cool. Don't know anything about that. I could never do that. <laughs> and he's just, you know, over there experiencing his life with his goggles on cutting down trees. Um, you just kind of show up to everything that you're doing, knowing that good or bad, if you can kind of just continue to let experiences wash over you as, as a learning thing, the hard and the good, like try to take, I was gonna record a video yesterday, but I was driving and I was like, don't do a driving video. They're annoying. Nobody wants to see you in the car talking, rambling. Um, but I was gonna say, you, we just, you can't forget. I know how corny I am. I don't know what to do about it. It's just facts of life. I'm obsessed with cliches because they're so true, but they're so, they're so, you just can't make sense of something like live in the moment. Like, like, uh, I don't know, like let go, go with the flow. It, it doesn't really resonate with people, which is why I like to take them into different kinds of metaphors. Cause we have to be able to connect to what things mean energetically. What I was going to say is like the video I was going to record yesterday was all about just like realizing that you do have the ability to be happy regardless of what's happening. And I know that sounds potentially ignorant on my part because I don't know what anybody is going through, but at the same time, I, I do in the collective energy, I can feel that there's a lot of really kind of conflicting stuff coming down. So I'm just going to get one more card to leave the message off with. And it, I just tried to shuffle and it came right back out again. So there is this beautiful, like unity. I think what I'm going to leave the message off on this kind of lasting thought, whenever you get into a situation where you feel like you're out of your depth or you're supposed to do something and you don't know, you're supposed to talk to like whatever it is, a challenge situation, Think about masculine and feminine energy within your own self. Think about like, am I, do, do I need to, am I closed off to receiving, you know? Think about how you behave when somebody give, pays you a compliment. Um, think about how you expect things to either, are you always kind of expecting things to be challenging or are you expecting things to kind of illuminate for you and, and surprise you? I'm just chronically spewing out affirmations about like, I'm just so willing to be pleasantly surprised today by miracles or you know anything and the most magical stuff is always happening it really is i should wear a gopro around for a while and just kind of invite people into the snow white nature of my connection to like animals and different things it really validates itself all of this cuckoo stuff like if you entertain if you entertain it but then also if you start to feel like you're getting on the on the other side of the you know do i need to be more in my feminine energy however you feel will indicate what you're operating in so if you start to feel like steamrolled or you're not in control um, perhaps you need to let go and sub kind of submit to the changes that are taking place but it could be an indicator that there's a need to kind of step up and exercise yourself like you do have the ability male or female to be <clears throat> um, just like confident assertive articulate and unapologetic while still being like kind and truthful um, and a lot of us, for some reason, today, feel very guilty when we have something to say. Like, we're just very worried about inconveniencing other people. And I, I, I kind of feel like it's majority two, two camps. Like, a lot of people fall into either that, where we're just very cautious and we don't want to kind of, we don't want our experience to harm or inconvenience another person's, or the person just kind of doesn't really care about other people um, because of some kind of self-involvement, because of, like, needing to, I don't know. Um, that's complicated, but I said I was going to get one more card and I got the lovers again and then I, I showed the high priestess because I said I, I, I don't want anybody to again think that I sent this the other day because I got a message last week that I heard in my kitchen. It was saying, I don't do this because I don't get it. I do this because I do get it or it was something along those lines and it made sense to me later when I was doing the reading because it's like, I know I have a pretty rosy, jolly, optimistic view on the, the state of the world but I've been able to arrive at this by thinking that everything is really, really dark and, and bad. And yet, right, they're, they're, it's not because I don't understand how bad things can be. It's because I feel like I'm trying to hold that and kind of just, again, with Rumpelstiltskin, spin it into gold because we can. We can literally do whatever we want with what's going on right now. And I have a mission <laughs> to kind of try to uplift people. Um, 
through the way that I see things because it really makes sense to me. This, this potential for, for healing and goodness. I think it's kind of the next step for humanity. I kind of think that our free will has been under attack for so long that um, it, the divide that's happening is like, well, you know what? That's another video for another time. I am going to cut the deck just to, I'm not satisfied with the lovers and the high priestess because I felt like that was a little redundant. So as far as the energy that affects the collective, the swords to wands, I know that I've been talking really fast. It's just because I wanted to get the reading in, but I have to go. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm here. Uh, at the lake this weekend because there's a family member they have a, a home that has this kind of nautical mural in it and they did a kitchen renovation and it got buffed over and so part of the mural I need to paint the boats back in but it's kind of this antiquated faded paint so they just need somebody with like a delicate touch who can understand these like faded colors because I'm gonna have to make it look old and kind of feather it in so it doesn't look like a band-aid you know or like a this weird spotch in the middle of the mural um, so that's what I gotta go do. I'm amping myself up to go do it because I've had a creative paralysis around painting. I've been moving my energy creatively in other ways, particularly music. Um, here's a message within this actually. Don't judge the way that like, sometimes we do put things on a shelf and kind of move away from them in order to exercise ourselves in other ways. And so I mentioned this, I think a month ago now, but like um, I've been kind of subconsciously, honestly, manifesting more music in my life or the ability to partake in more musical stuff because I really, love music um i've never really funneled my musical interest into one thing and let that be the way but i think i'm gonna do it um around voice because i have the i'm i'm singing with some people now and it's going great and i love it it's it's exciting it requires a lot more of me but i kind of feel like that's where my and by that i mean like i'm so i'm so shy in stage fright and so i'm like you know what you can get over this you can expand and become better at sharing what it is you like to do which is sing and perform. I think I do like to perform, but I forget that when I'm performing. Um, anyway, um, allow the way that you're moving through different expressions of yourself be exactly what they need to be <clears throat> without judgment. And that's kind of hard because there's always going to be something. You're not, you're not this, you're not, a, you know, some... I'm seeing like a, a deity with multiple arms who can just do everything all at once. None of us are like that. We all have to choose and compromise and focus on certain things at certain times. And I'm actually seeing a card from the Psychic Tarot by John Holland and it says sacrifice on it. And it's the major arcana for, I forget, um, perhaps judgment, number 20 maybe, I don't know. But it's about like knowing that the things that seem to be really like, the human emotions that would accompany them would be like a sadness or a loss, like a sacrifice or like a guilt. You're not meant to be able to fulfill everybody's demands or wishes around you, right? We're having this shift internally around like, you service yourself first. Like if we all just got bopped in the head by a, I don't know, a cosmic ray and like had amnesia and all, all people on earth were walking around trying to be like, do you know what we're doing here? Like we never, we didn't know each other you know, you'd kind of be out on your own. In some ways, that's what we're doing. A lot of people live um, under these spells of kind of collective amnesia. And I don't know how you can just walk around on earth and be like, just accept things. I don't get it, you know? Because for most of my life, I've been like, what, what on earth, <laughs> like pun intended, is going on here? What are we doing? Why are so many people, like I remember learning about taxes as a child and being like, this sounds pretty... <laughs> I'm not sure I'm on board with that. <laughs> um, my mother just being so matter of fact about it in her explanation, I'm just like, why would we, why would we, who agreed to this? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm also seeing, uh, I saw a rabbit earlier, right? Rabbit energy from the animal tarot, the card says now is a lucky time. And I really wanna drive that home because manifestation potential is like very activated hold the positive what I, what I talked about videos and videos ago bathe yourself in a bath of light and love just just go into a dreamy space for at least two minutes a day just to be able to connect your energy to that place where like rapid healing has to do with laughter again too right when you're in a bubbly high vibrational state you can kind of bathe your cells in healing energy those things really do heal people you know laughter and um, 
I, I looked at the dock by the way and I saw this itty bitty piece of like algae and it's shaped like a rabbit so I'm seeing rabbit totem energy now is a lucky time as something that is coming up for us and so attach your belief and your expectation around the way that things are changing right now to the fact that something very very lucky you know what what kind of thing would happen to you what kind of thing would happen to you that afterwards you would say like I'm so lucky I'm so lucky. I'm so I'm so lucky that that happened to me. Like what what would be taking place if that's how you would be speaking of it? Um Yeah, so let's just get the final the final clarification card here. All right. I mean, a whole pile flipped out, but then hey, there's a chariot on the bottom, Cancerian energy. It's um <laughs> moving forward. And guess what? The emperor drives the chariot. The Emperor drives the chariot in the story of the tarot. So again, it's this like, I don't have to know everything. I actually need to be okay with not knowing everything and still knowing that I'm like a competent adult who knows what's up, right? But I can still kind of have this open curiosity and let people teach me things through my experiences and not be condescending and, and, and not need to prove anything, right? Kind of be in this self-possessed, like healed, like this, this yin and yang. I kind of believe that I kind of believe I, there's a quote by RuPaul that says, I actually don't know. It's, it's like gender, gender is performative, right? We actually do learn a lot about how a boy and a girl should be. And that starts in babyhood with the pink and the blue, you know, what balloons are you going to buy? Um, and then the people who don't find out their gender before their baby is born or something, you know, it's like yellow to be neutral, but gender role, but also so masculine and feminine within the self, it's very it's very performative but i think to integrate it people just naturally end up like i feel like i'm like i don't know 68 percent feminine energy and whatever the other part thir yeah 32 is my math mathing i think so 32 percent masculine energy maybe it's maybe it's even more close to 50 50 just because i feel very in my balance it's not that i feel you know manly <laughs> even though i have a very deep voice it's funny in middle school me and my friend used to practice talking in a higher octave because we were self-conscious about it <laughs> but i um i really like <laughs> i really like being able to have a, a melodic voice i feel like my voice is a good expression of how i am inside which is like i can be super directed and serious but also kind of light and fluffy um and so what I'm trying to say is that when we, when we start to fall into this place of acceptance, oh my God, I didn't even look at it, but it's the Wheel of Fortune. So everything that I've been talking about, and this card was um, a key player in the reading from the other day too. It's, it's all about the divine timing, releasing, I'm seeing white knuckles, gripping reins, reins like, a, like mush, like sleigh dogs, or I mean sled dogs, but also reindeer <laughs> for Santa's sleigh, just reins, right, like mush. Um, don't white knuckle it right now. In fact, you know, stretch your fingers out. Feel how easy it can be to just start here now. Be here now. Ram Dass says that. Be here now. What I'm saying is that when you kind of come back to this calm center, you will find that there is this polarity of being able to be. What I'm saying is like, I don't, I have a lot of masculine energy, but it's not because I'm not a feminine woman it's because I just I'm not afraid to like speak my mind and do those things that are of healed masculine energy so that you're still trying to be in a place of kindness but it's like unfortunately regardless of how it makes you feel not because I don't care about you but because I need to honor what's going on with me I will say what I think and I know how to do that um, and I think we all kind of fall into these places where we are balance between the two polarities but maybe a little bit more of, of one or the other and it doesn't have to correspond with your gender um and i mean this goes into like the soul choosing the life path before birth and if you have if you don't know what i'm talking about with that you can imagine that a soul pretends you got to pick actually there's a beautiful children's book that my parents used to read to me I think it was something called like the boy with the kite in Tibet it was basically about this soul this baby boy and you could see him in like heaven basically with angels and he was he was like picking his continent and then picking his town and then picking his village and then picking his parents and then picking his lessons you know and going through life um we really do do that sometimes we have relations in our lives or circumstances that we're born into and we're like why 
Like if, if only, if only this were different in my life, you know, and I didn't have to deal with this thing because this is kind of a thing or a relationship or a circumstance that's, that's always limited me and dragged me down. And so we kind of blame things, our own shortcomings on things that we've never been able to control. But that is self-sabotage because it's like, you know what, for better or for worse, we've all been dealt a hand in life. And your biggest asset is to release any type of resentment about the hand that you've been dealt in life. Silver lining type stuff, you know? And again, I feel like um, it's very easy to look at me or a person like me who talks about the things that I talk about and um, I don't know. I don't know. Assume that I don't know what struggle is like because I, I know who I am. I know that I'm um, very privileged, but that doesn't mean that I haven't had to overcome a lot of stuff and survive things. I mean, I survived getting knocked out into this water. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> um, I really am praying for the collective right now too, because I've been getting, I think it was three nights ago. I didn't sleep at all. I didn't sleep at all. I was crying a lot. I was purging out a lot of like really intense stuff. And I know, I mean, I know I'm not, insane right when i have these deep deep emotions it does have to do with collective collective transmutation because of the things that are coming up in the collective from the collective subconscious to the collective consciousness i think that a lot of people like fear is what i'm getting some things are going on in our lives that are just like real scary um and there's also this sense of like hopelessness that i was feeling and it was just result like it was just overwhelming energy and i was um you know i guess i was upset like i, I just kind of couldn't uh couldn't sleep and I was crying it all out but you know it doesn't mean that like there's just still this ability to be like I don't need to know you know what's coming next because whenever I need to I can return to this kind of inner peace and collect myself and it speaks to grounding and I shared this before but as a water sign I like to ground around water so maybe this has to do I'll just finish off this by saying <sighs> get to know yourself get to know yourself through the way that the stars were arranged when when the universe brought you into this world because that speaks to the layout of your whole existence there's another Carl Jung quote that's coming to me for some reason and it has to do with ego primi primitivism primitive expression of the ego is always being able to locate the cause of your issues outside of yourself when you see the world as a mirror for your own experience then everything changes and things can actually shift incredibly rapidly. So go back to the idea of me saying like, put yourself into a little high frequency bath where even if you have to completely detach and like, I'm even seeing somebody at work, go to the bathroom, but just sit there for an extra 10 minutes because you can. Nobody can be like, come on out. <laughs> You've been in there long enough. I mean, don't take too long, but um, finding the space and time to just connect to what I'm talking about. And I am very blessed that I can just run away and come here um, because it's much needed. Sometimes I need to do that and, and connect on a, on a deeper level to the things that make me come back to that Ace of Wands, right? And I'm also seeing the star card, even though that didn't come out, the star being the thing that's in the Hermit's Lantern. And again, the Hermit being this energy to embrace right now. So coming back to that, and I like that because the Hermit and the Emperor, right? They're kind of two sides of the same coin, or I see them that way. I actually don't know if that's correlative in tarot and how people actually know and you know study the the stories of the tarot and this and the journey the journey of the fool really through ascension and learning but anyway the star card coming back to that simplicity that ace of wands that that understanding that things can be both and i have no idea what i'm going to title this because i don't even know what i just said for 44 minutes and 10 seconds but i hope everybody's doing really well and i kept talking because I, I wanted to say I've been praying for the collective. So if you're in a hard space right now, just know that again, through space and time, how we can connect to people remotely, you can just affirm in your mind that you're open to receiving, you know, the, the prayers and the well wishes that I'm sending out. I just want people to know that I'm putting out, I'm trying to put out a lot of really good energy. You don't have to know where it's going in order to put it out, right? I just feel it necessary right now to try to hold the hold the light and kind of keep that beaming out above anything else because it is a stronger frequency. One person vibrating high at 800 hertz is more powerful than 100 people who are in 
the lower frequencies of guilt and shame. And so I am kind of unapologetically trying to stand in that power, not in like a, look at me, <laughs> nothing, nothing about that. But I'm just like, I, I think I can help right now. So what I'm trying to say is that if you're in a hard place, just sit and <sighs> it, it is feminine energy where you go into a space of being like, I receive healing, I receive strength, prayer, whatever. You can imagine, you know, healing light coming into you because I'm putting it out. So if you're open to it, just receive it and let it kind of give you just a little bit of a, I don't know, a mo motivational push to keep calm and carry on. So, all right, well, thanks for being with me here on the dock this fine mid afternoon. I'm gonna go see if I still remember how to paint and get this mural touched up and have a little boating booze cruise later and enjoy my life and head back to the city tomorrow and keep on keeping on so I really um, also just have to say I have reached a point where I have so many videos that I want to make but I simply am as I said the other day with seven of Pentacles but a man with a hoe just tilling my garden um, I I really want to focus on getting the Barbie breakdown done because it's really I keep calling it the Barbie thing but it's really about the American dream and disassembling a lot of stuff I'm using Barbie to go full on for a lot of stuff that I have commentary on. So that's important to me. And I'm gonna, I might kind of peel off of the channel for just a little while to focus on things, but just know that I'll be working on that, I guess. And then when it's done, I'll post it and kind of resume things as normal, but who knows, who knows? I've come to find that I say that things are gonna be a certain way and then they go however they go. And perhaps it's not necessary or worthwhile to give little updates like that, but okay. Have a great day.